They did it you, you stole her crop. Sir, you stole the crop. You, he stole the crop. That's the thief. That's the thief. One second. Listen to me. Are you happy you stole her crop? For you guys to come. She's reading the Quran. Reading the Quran, yeah. Do you think you're doing a service this time by grabbing that Quran and running with it? Let me tell you, you're a weak person. Let me tell you why you're a weak person. Papa de. Our translation is different. Hey, pass up. They run like they run like family. Chase the, the other guy, but he just disappears. That's not acceptable. They run with a book. I tried to chase them. They run with a book. The idiots. They run with a book. You can, can the book. still. You can kick people. You can put people down. People can be on the floor. Yes. You know what the bottom line is? Lord Jesus Christ is still on the throne. And all the day of judgment, you will only stand in front of him. He's the gentleman who stepped in to push the book. Steal the book. Sir, sir, why did you steal my book? Why did your friend steal my book? JC, move away. JC. JC, move away, brother. JC, move away. JC, move away. JC, move away. JC, JC, control. Don't deal with Abu Umar. Umar destroyed the Quran. Where is Muslim community? Which one is this Kraden Umar? Man stealing his book, bro. What's up with that? Disgusting. Teachings of your prophet. Is that because he stole underwear of people? Therefore, you can steal his book. Of course. Of course. This is what we did to the Quran. This is what we did to the Quran. So you're doing, so you're doing what your prophet tells you to do. You are like your prophet when you steal her Quran, and that means 
Islam is the reason you stole. Islam taught you to steal. Islam taught you to steal. Islam taught them to steal. Can you put holes in it? What do you mean put holes in it? There was no holes on that one. It's still her book. It's still her property. Of course I wouldn't. That's why I've never done it to a Quran. That's why I've never done it to a Quran. But that's not a justification for that. That's not a justification for that. He slapped someone with it. How about that? It was an English translation. Is that the Quran? Do you are you happy that uh, they stole her uh, Quran? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. It's our book. There you go. Book. So they believe I'm that I'm they can do whatever claims that they want. And why? 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 Because Muhammad stole. He would launch thieving raiding parties against the pagans of Mecca to steal from them and so Muslims feel in the park that they can steal so Muhammad stole if you're a good Muslim get her her book it's not her book it's God's book there you go there you go so the crime is acceptable get her her book the crime is acceptable the crime is acceptable. Are you happy they stole her book? It's still her book. It is her book. It is her book. It is her book. Even Islamically, you're wrong. Because right now, you're in a land of treaty, which means you follow our laws, not Sharia law. So you're even Islamically wrong. So there you go. The Muslims are justifying and celebrating theft in the park because Muhammad was a thief. What? What? Thank you, you can have it. You can have it. So, this brother, this brother, said that it was wrong to desecrate the Quran. Yeah, it was. Right, right, right. right. But Muhammad desecrated the Kaaba. That was a pagan shrine and Muhammad desecrated it. So Muslims, so Muslims can't complain if someone desecrates what's sacred to them when Muhammad desecrated what was sacred to others. And for 1400 years, Muslims have desecrated Christian churches. So he can't complain. He can't complain. She did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong in drilling holes into the Quran. Nothing. And why? Why? Because all of the prophets yeah. destroyed the totems of the pagans. And Muslims are pagans. Yeah. They worship a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kiss a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they bow down to a rock. They go around a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Islam, and Muhammad himself yeah. and his followers yeah. desecrated the religious sites of other people. So they have nothing to complain about. If someone drills holes into a Quran, so long as she owns it, and she does. What would you say it was divinely sent? It was God's action, not a human action, it was God sent. The Quran is not God sent. Well, that's what you believe, but others don't believe that, so exactly. Others believe it's God sent, so they're doing the action of God, not the action of human. The bomb of the... the it's God, it's, it's God's it power. is still wrong. It's, 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 it's wrong. It's wrong. You celebrated theft. Yeah. That is what you did. You celebrating theft. I hope yeah. that every employer yeah. that saw their employee yeah. on this video celebrating theft yeah. remembers yeah. that their employees celebrated thieving. 
and stealing other people's property. Tell us again how proud you are that someone stole her Quran. I'm very proud that someone stole her Quran. Very proud. Very proud of theft. Very proud of theft. Christianity is better than Islam. It is better than Islam. I've got water, thank you. Islam teaches that you can steal from the unbeliever. Christianity teaches that you can steal from no one. No one. No one. Christianity is better than Islam. The law of Moses in the Old Testament is better than the Quran. Is better than Sharia law. Perfect. You were not explaining. You finish talk and you make a hole in the that Quran no and you push people to steal it and then you talk. Are you happy they stole her Quran? I am happy because they There you go. Happy they stole her Quran. Are you happy they stole her Quran? A Muslim stole Hatun's Quran. Stealing is forbidden. So did they steal her Quran? Listen. Let so, him. okay, you he doesn't know. He's wise enough no, 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 not to no, no, say on no, camera. No, 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 no. Are you happy they stole her Quran? Are you happy that they stole her Quran? Are you happy they stole her? They took it, they took it. You're happy? They saved it. You you stole her Quran. Sorry, you stole the Quran. You he stole the Quran. That's the thief. That's the thief. One second. Listen to me. Are you happy you stole her Quran? Are you happy they stole her Quran? Keep your hands to yourself. Are you happy they stole the Quran? Are you happy? There you go. He stole the Quran. He's lying. Why would he steal? Why would he save his holy book and then say he's not a Muslim? I'll answer that question. I will answer that question. Yes I will answer that question. I will answer that question. Are you happy? You wanted yes to make no. a hole in the Bible. That's why. They took it, but they didn't make a hole in the Bible. Right. The we'll do question for question. Yes. Yes. This is the thief police. This is the one that stole Hatton's book. Are you happy this is the holy book? Watch, watch that the police won't do anything. Why, why, why? 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 Because it's easier not to deal with this thief. Are you happy destroying the Holy Quran? Easy job. It's an easy job. Are you happy destroying the Holy Quran? No, I would never do it. Thank you. Bye. Now, are you happy they stole it? 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 I'll take that as a yes. Are you upset that they stole her Quran? Or do you want to celebrate Muslims being like Muhammad? Ali, are you are you happy they stole her Quran? Ali, Ali, are you happy they stole her Quran? Yeah, answer the question. Answer the question. I'm going to interrupt Ali the moment he doesn't answer the question. Let me make it very clear. Yeah? I tell this to the Muslim youth. Yeah, for you guys to come, she's reading the Quran. Uh, reading the Quran. Yeah. Do you think you're doing a service this time by grabbing that Quran and running with it? Let me tell you, you're a weak person. Let me tell you why you're a weak person. Because in the past, we have a lot of brothers who come in to Dawah. There's so many shahadas that happen that he gets a, he gets more burnt than the sun that's burning him now. Yeah? He gets a good Sunday. Whenever, I am right. Whenever Bob He's probably shahada, right. He does this. I am right. He's probably right. So, so first point you've ever been right so on, Ali. First he, point. At least I admire his honesty. Yeah. He doesn't like seeing shahadas. Yeah. Now, why do you guys come here and Hartun, who's got issues, let her drill the Quran? Look, you're drilling a book. Okay, no problem, yeah? Why do you think? I'll tell the Muslim youth. Well, you've got really anger issues. Don't come to the park because you're a weak person. Look, if she's doing that, ignore it. How many times Hartun came to my table? I turn my back, leave me alone, I don't want to talk to you, yeah? Because you're toxic, I don't want to talk to you, bro. So what is the point of grabbing her Quran, it's her personal Quran, let, whatever she wants to do, let her do it. Because the moment you take it off and run, what does Bob do? Hey, Muslim, <laughs> terrorism! And, and, without, and without any prompting from me, how many Muslims said they were happy about it? Four or five. Four or five, okay. were they wrong? They're wrong. And let me there tell you why they're wrong. Well, they don't, Ali. They're acting on what? Impulsive emotions, yeah? You think you did a service by getting the Quran and running? Wow. wow. Amazing. What a service to Islam. Did you see how that brother get, grabbed the Quran and run with it? What a disappointment. What, how weak can you be? 
I'll make it very clear. You've got anger issues, brother? Go to the gym, go somewhere else, go for a little jog, yeah? Okay, when I have anger issues, I say, let me go for a little jog, and I feel better afterwards. You get what I'm trying to say? So anybody that does that to even her too, I despise her so much, but I would never go and grab a Quran from her because it's weak. All are I'm you going to get a Quran back then? The, look, I'm not going to... Good news, never get her back. Are you going to get a Quran back then? Whoever's, whoever's got it, look, it's already drilled, yeah? Whoever's done it, it shows how weak she is. If she had any faith in her religion, she would come here and talk about the gospel, the Trinity, Jesus, love, whatever she will come and do that so yeah. to me that's a weak individual I don't need to do go that. and entertain that so I'm saying this very clearly you Muslims are weak individuals who will come here and grab that ignore her you don't like her bro why do you stand next to someone you don't like if I don't like him and I don't I'll be honest to his face he doesn't like me as well I avoid <laughs> no, no, no. him actually I avoid here's him. the difference between my religion and his religion I don't like what he stands for but I'm perfectly able to love him yes. perfectly yes. able to love him yes. I don't dislike Ali Dawa. I am willing I am willing to be friends with Ali Dawa. I got no hatred in my heart for him. But I hate his religion. I hate his ideology. I hate his values and his beliefs. But I don't hate him as a human being. And that's the difference between Islam and Christianity. Is we make a distinction between the sin and the sinner. Between the, war, the action and the one who does the action. And we always strive to bring the one who does the action to a higher better self Perfect. that's the idea of redemption we don't we don't we don't teach hatred to people but Ali Dawa has demonstrated that he does teach hatred to people and he creates he creates the cultural context in which Muslims do feel justified to steal Hatun Tasha's Quran now I am not gonna argue with Ali Dawa's condemnation of the behavior. How can I? He's building on the hack. He's building on truth. He's building on righteousness. And as a Christian, I would argue with you. But that would mean that Ali Dawa has condemned his prophet because his prophet stole from other people. Uh, Ali Dawa condemns the desecration of the Quran. I would never desecrate a Quran myself. It's not what I think is helpful. Just because I wouldn't want someone to desecrate my Bible and we're taught to do unto others as we would have done unto them. So, if I don't want my Bible desecrating, I don't desecrate the Quran. However, however, I don't think that Hatun did something morally wrong because all of the prophets, all of them, desecrated the pagan temples and the pagan shrines. And Muslims themselves will defend Muhammad's desecration of the Kaaba on the grounds that it was pagan. Well, we Christians see the Quran as a totem of a pagan religion. No, I wouldn't do it myself, but that is of sentiment and aesthetic because I love history and I consider the Quran a contribution to human history. And it should be respected like any text of the medieval period should be respected. But, but, she did nothing morally wrong, and she did nothing legally wrong. It is her Quran. She can do with it whatever she wants. If she wanted to use it as toilet paper, it is her right. If she owns it, if she took Ali Dawa's Quran and desecrated that, then she would be doing something criminally wrong. But if she owns the Quran, she can do what she wants to the Quran. That is how the law is. So she isn't morally wrong. She isn't legally wrong. I simply disagree about the utility of her behavior. That is all. And I applaud Ali Dawa for condemning the thief. But in so doing, he condemns his prophet. I'm sure you'll want to reply. Yeah, which, is, which, which is absolutely not true. Because we know at the prophet, peace be upon him's time. And actually in Islam, uh, when you live along uh, with the Christians and the Jews in their own lands, if a Muslim, listen carefully, yeah? This is why we know this is absolute lies. Okay, this is absolute Let me tell you why. Because the prophet, peace be upon him, at his time, and even now, we know that if I go to, imagine we're living in an Islamic land, yeah? And this area, this is where the Christians and the Jews live, yeah? If I go to a Christian's table and they're drinking alcohol and pork, if I get that alcohol bottle and smash it, and I get the pork and I throw it, I have to pay for that. I have to pay for that. I repeat again, in an Islamic land, under the Khilafah, not ISIS, under the Islamic Khilafah, legitimate Khilafah, if you go and get a Christian's alcohol and smash it, 
and get the pork and throw it on the floor, you are going to be penalized. That's Islam. And in the Quran, Surah Mumtayna, verse 8, makes that very clear. Allah does not forbid you, and it's not obligated. Allah does not forbid you from being just and kind. To whom? To those who do not kick you out of your house based on your faith, because of your faith. Allah only forbids you those who are being hostile towards you. So the question is very simple. Uh, when he talks about, for example, uh, respecting me, etc., we do not hate the uh, sin, we hate the sinner. We have the same concept in Islam, but there's something that we need to bear in mind. If you hate my religion and you hate the religion, how could you? This is what Thomas Robinson used to say. I have no problem with um, Muslims, I have a problem with Islam. But this is where the matter lies. And him, one thing I respect with him, uh, there's a lot of things I don't, but one thing is he doesn't sugarcoat it. Jesus is love. I know if I slap this cheek, he's going to come from my cheek. Yeah, and I that's I? no, I know that. You know why? Because at least he's realistic and practical, and, and it's more of the crusader side. Yeah. Now, as a crusader, like, I don't want to be a crusader, but as you have that kind of that would be a compliment if you called me a crusader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even if you, because you have that, I know, and Allah tells us the psychology of hostile Christians and the hostile Jews and the hostile pagans, and Allah even tells us about the hostile munafikun. So we know deep down that when the time comes. If you start seeing Islam growing, which is in the park, we have shahadas like it's happy days, and it's not us, it's from God. Now, I know very well that if the time came to call to arms, I'll be seeing you right in front of me. I know. You know why? Because it's not about, I hate the sinner, uh, and I hate the sin, but not the sinner. That is nonsense. Because I know when the time calls, I'll be seeing Bob with a sword. Yeah, if he's in the battlefield, you'll be coming for me. You're not going to be like, I hate the sinner. Let me let me chop the sin off him. <laughs> you're, you're going to be coming for Ali Dawa. Because you know why? You're going to see our Islam's growth, the shahadah is taking place as a threat to you and your values. Tell me if I'm wrong. So, in answer to the question, the possibility of a civil war in a Western country is an increasing probability. And it's an increasing probability because if you have ever studied any civil war, what are the ingredients of a civil war? Different ethnicities, different, poli different beliefs, different values, different political aspirations, and then some kind of catalyst to set it off, which is usually some economic crisis. Examples, Lebanon, Sudan, um, Yugoslavia, all of these are examples that prove my point. And it's a shame that Ali Dawa doesn't compliment me with some intelligence. If a civil war started in this country, and Muslims were in one party, and Christians within another, I'm not stupid enough, stupid enough to charge into battle with a sword, I would be carrying a rifle. So compliment with some kind of intelligence, please. No, no, let's be clear. Because you can kill me from a further, a further away. Absolutely. That's, that, exactly, 88 millimeter. So, be an artillery piece. Anyway, anyways, 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 guys. But right now, guys, right, right now, what we've got is a historical redressing of history. The Christians of Spain, the empire, the Western empire had fallen by the seventh century. The Christians of Spain and Portugal had never raised a sword to the Muslims and the Muslims invaded Spain anyway. The Christians of France had never raised a sword against the Christian, against the Muslims. And the Muslims invaded France anyway. The Christians of the Italian peninsula had never raised a sword against Muslims. The Western Empire had fallen and the Muslims invaded anyway. So this idea, this idea, this revisionist idea that jihad is only defensive is an apologetic narrative created by Muslims. I don't agree with that, by the way. Classical, classical Muslims, as I think he's about to admit, classical Muslims saw jihad as offensive, i.e. they will invade the lands of others and when they invaded the lands of Christians and I compliment him for his honesty he said yes yes i.e. I'm not lying like these buffoons here call me a liar he's just contradicted you he's just contradicted you so they invaded Christian lands including Christian Byzantium and when they did they desecrated churches. They turned churches into mosques, like they did at Hagia Sophia, and like they did at so many other churches, and have done 
for 1400 years. They never paid Christians any compensation. They took Christians as slaves by their millions across Eastern Europe during the ISIS of its time, the Ottoman Empire. You need to learn your history to see the lies of the apologists like Ali Dawah who tried to sugarcoat Islamic Jihad and suprem supremacism and dimitude. So, 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 when you see it for what it is, the question for us Christians then becomes, do we have a right to stand up against an oppressive, aggressive ideology called Islam? And the answer is yes, we do. And so I do. But, but, do I think that every Muslim is a jihadi? No. Do I think that every Muslim wants to see Islam dominate? No, I don't. And so those Muslims who don't buy into the ideology of Islam, but have basically compromised on their faith, and that they want to live in peace, I say, be friends with those Muslims. But these kinds of Muslims, the Ali Dawa kinds of Muslims, you have to stand up against them. You have to stand up against what they believe in. And however they bring the fight to you, you have to be willing to take the fight to them in like manner. I'll be very quick because I know I've talked for a long time. Turning the other cheek has nothing to do with pacifism. If you want to do a Bible study on it, we can do one right now. Furthermore, the idea as Christians, the idea as Christians that we should simply allow injustice to be carried out without a word or action against it isn't Christian. We're called as Christians to stand up against injustice and Islam practices injustice in dimitude and slavery in its attitudes towards women and in countless other ways. Thank you very much. Um, by the way, before I carry on, um, oh, I was going to offer you water, but you already have it. Thank you. Uh, and by the way, me offering you water, I'll make it very clear. You, I see you as a hostile uh, person, and uh, let me make it clear. Me offering you water is, doesn't mean that my views on you, or if it was in the battlefield, uh, I would be throwing roses at you. That wouldn't be the case. Let me make it clear. Water. Offering water is that Salahuddin al Ayyubi, what he did, what he did when he was fighting the Crusaders, yeah? And he offered his help to his enemy. But when it came to the battlefield, it was a different story. So I just want to make that clear, yeah? You're a hostile enemy and I see you as an enemy of Allah and I would always see you as that. But I want to make one thing very clear, yeah? As he said, I never ever said Islam, Jihad is only defensive, yeah? And the Jihad that we're talking about here are not individuals, there's ISIS sympathizers who bloody give me death threats going and killing innocent people. What you've demonstrated is very categorically clear. I was talking so, about the Ottomans. No, 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 I, okay. So I'm talking about in general, not these individuals. What you've made very clear is that you when it comes, when, when the things get heated, you will be my enemy and you would be coming from me. So this notion of we hate the sinner, but not the, the sinner, the sin, but not the sinner. You, once again, when the Muslim lands, when the Muslims invade lands, there's something very clear in Quran chapter 256, Allah says there is no compulsion in religion. Invading a land and forcing them to accept Islam and desecrating their churches and their places of worship Which Muslims did for 1400 years. separate things. Because if they did it for 1400 years, you would not have Coptic Christians in Egypt. Let's make that very clear. There would be no churches in Muslim lands. So we know very clearly. You don't believe me? Go he's to he's lying about Coptic Christians. Let me finish. Yeah, go on. Because this is my last one because I need to go. Yeah? Two what two minutes, bro? We spoke for seven, eight minutes. One second. So yeah, I want to make right. something clear. When we talk about offensive jihad. Offensive jihad. Offensive jihad. Every uh, nation, every empire has gone and tried to take over land. Yeah, yeah. The difference between them and us Muslims is the following. We do not go there to force people to accept Islam, number one. Number two, we are not allowed to go there and desecrate their churches. Which they did. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, had a treaty in Medina and it made it very clear the following. 
And this is a treaty you can find uh, uh, online if you search it, yeah? Is it the Pact of Umar? No, no, it's, no, it's not that one. There's another one, yeah? There's mm. one that's fake that's going around. I'm not talking about that one, yeah? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the Christians, their wealth, their, uh, their, their, uh, their lives, their churches, and many other things are under the protection of Allah and His Messenger. So now it's very clear for us that if we go and force somebody to accept Islam, yeah. you've gone against a very clear ayah in the Quran which says there is no compulsion in religion. It is not abrogated as well. So what that means is invading lands yeah. and equating that with killing people and getting them to accept Islam yeah. is false because Islam forbids that. However, when the Crusaders, and you see this many times, killing, forget Muslims, other Christian denominations, killing them, yeah, so much so that they would ask for help from the Muslims. So let's make something very clear. Offensive jihad is that. Defensive jihad, when God Almighty, when God, Prophet said, when God Almighty tells us, when going to war, because Allah knows, if you do not, if you do not go to war, they're going to come for you. So it's either they come and kill you, or you fight who? The fighting men. Because the jizya is implemented on who? The fighting men. Not the women and the children and the elderly. So, hold on a second, if Islam is going there to force people to accept Islam, why is it that you are allowed to pay jizya? Because the people of the book are closer to allowed. us. So much so, and I'll end on this note, because I need to go. Yeah, I need to no, but stay there for your response. No, no, but he, yeah, he, it's my response. Yeah, 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 it's all right, let him speak, let him speak. He's speaking, he's speaking. Yeah. When, when the Christians, the Romans were fighting Josh. the Persians, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran, and in the Battle of Badr, the companions and the Prophet were rejoicing for two things. They won the Battle of Badr and also the people of the book, the Christians, won over the Persians which were pagans. The Muslims were happy because the Christians won over the pagan Arabs. Why? Because they're closer to us. We can eat from your food, sorry, and we can marry your woman. So if this was the case, why would we have these regulations where we're happy that you're winning the war, we can marry and eat your food, and we, you're referred to as the people of the book. So I will end on that note okay. and make it very clear, and Bob will have his last statement, and we had a nice civil discussion, okay. honest on both sides, and I'll make that very clear. I'm not here to shit my religion as much as him. And I'll end on the note. What did he say again? I do not hate the sinner, but I hate the sin. But when it comes to the battlefield, he said, I won't have a sword, I'll have a rifle. You'll see me with a rifle. Yeah. Okay, Watch out for my bullets. So, <laughs> so, Go, Ali, Ali, we love you, Every, everyone that I have a civil conversation with, I always give them a I gift. Need to, I need to go. I'm just giving you a gift. That's a gift for you. It it's talking about uh, Calvary, where Christ was crucified and the significance of it. And it's a spiritual book about how we spiritually take ourselves to Calvary. So it's a book about Christian spirituality. Just to prove yes. that as much as I disagree with what you stand for, I got no problem with you. So you look after yourself. Okay, take care. So, so let me let me just reply to what Ali Dawa said. So Ali Dawa said that we allow because they're cowards. It's all right. It's all right. If they're cowards, JC, stop with JC. I record I Ali. Are you not record? Uh, you come to record Bob. Ali. You have to go. No, the you come last, to record Ali. The last message you I come record here. Record Ali. You come to record Ali. The last message I record here. If you want to run away, run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. I'm not running away. I'm not. No, but he run away. You run away. Just record Ali. No, no, no. Do you come to record Ali? No, rap out from Ali. You come to record 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 Ali. He gives four minutes. Four minutes away. The coward. So what did we see? What did we see? Give a chance to be fair, Thank you. So what did we see? We saw the Dawa channels run away from the conclusion of the debate. And why do they run? Why do they run? Why? They run from the conclusion of the debate because the Dawa channels edit their videos. The Dawa channels edit their videos. That's what they do. They do. No. So let us, let us notice how they behave. Notice how the Dawah team behaves. There you go. And what you see here in the park, if Muslims dominate our society, is what will happen to us all. Is what will happen to us all. And what just happened off camera that you didn't see, is this Muslim here encouraged this Muslim here to punch me in the face. He just did that off camera. He did that off camera. He did that because he's copying his prophet. He did that 
because he's copying his prophet who had critics of him murdered, murdered. No, in response to Ali's comments, Ali said, we allow them to pay the jizya. No, they don't. They impose the jizya. They force the jizya. The Quran says to fight against the unbeliever and the people of the book until they pray the salah as we pray the salah and give the zakat as we give the zakat and say the shahada as we say the shahada or until they feel themselves they pay subjugated and pay the jizya with willing submission subdued or humiliated that's what the quran says so he lied to you furthermore furthermore Ali said, what did he say? He said that there's no compulsion in religion. He said that, it was not abrogated, he said that. And he said it wasn't abrogated. He said that, yeah. So why do they have an apostasy law that says if you leave Islam, we'll kill you? <laughs> isn't that <laughs> compulsion? Yeah, it is, it is, it is. If I it locked is. you in a room, isn't that forcing you to stay there? It is, it is, it is. So he lied to you again. It is, it is. And then Ali Dawa admitted that aggressive Islam that aggressive Islam is true Islam. Sorry, aggressive jihad is truly a part of Islamic teaching. That's what he said. So all those times in the past when he argued with DCCI and he said, oh, it's just in defense, he was lying. And he's exposed himself on camera. And hopefully DCCI will let us do a flashback. Furthermore, furthermore, since we since we've seen, since we've seen, since we've seen, since we've seen that aggressive jihad is truly part of Islam, then we can understand why Muslims invaded Georgia, Armenia, Byzantine, Egypt, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Sicily. France, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, Austria, Greece, and countless other countries. They did it because their religion says they can. And he said, oh, if we were so bad, why are there Coptic Christians in Egypt? Why are there anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt? Why are Christian churches bombed and attacked by Muslim mobs in Egypt? Why? Why did they invade? Why did they invade? Egypt in the first place. They did so because of their supremacist teaching. No. Furthermore, their domination resulted in Arabization. The Nubians of Egypt had their own language. It was called Coptic. It was an African language. They had an African culture. And Christianity embodied that. And then Islam came and Arabized them because Islam is about Arabization. Furthermore, furthermore, Christians in Egypt are an oppressed minority. If you don't believe me, go and visit a Coptic church and speak to them directly whether they are being persecuted or not. Don't believe the lies of the Islamists. My final point in this wrap up is he said that because in a civil war, in which a hypothetical situation, in which if Muslims were on one side and Christians on another, I would be found with a rifle in my hand, that that betrays the idea of loving the sinner and hating the sin shows a mind that has never thought about what it means to love the sinner and to hate the sin. Because the reality is, sin expresses itself through power structures and economic structures and social structures. And one of the ways that those structures are created is through the force of arms. And so the only way that you can resist 
the ISIS of our day is you have to beat them militarily. Batter them. And make no mistake, the Ottoman Empire and the Fatimad Empire and the Umayyad Empire and the Abbasid Empire were all the ISIS of their day. And we can resist them. But when they are powerless, and only when they are powerless, then we are in a position to love the sinner because they are not in a position to harm other people. And the Caucasians are idiots, according to this man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how free speech works. You beat stupid speech with better speech. Speaks for itself. Okay, that's it. Shall we go back to our talk? I, I, that's a question not even worth answering. No, no, it's not a private conversation. Because it's not even a question worth answering. No, no, it's, it's a, a silly, it's a silly question. No, no, it's a question. It's just a silly question. Um, well, I want to do a talk, but I am up for a chat. How about, how about after I finish this talk that I was doing? Me and you grab a coffee. Do you want it on film? I, I went to Ali Dawa and I asked him the question about Why do you take the lens of the Africans? And he gives them the Bible. It's a it's an infinite punishment for How about next really week we talk about it? I'll, I'll, I'll come here next week. I can't guarantee you being here if I can. I will. Yeah. We'll talk about it next week. We'll talk about it next week. Definitely. JC, let's finish this talk. Let's, let's go over to buy the room. How are we doing for battery and time?